and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from the Harlem in New York. Hello, everybody. How are you? This is the Ramble, and we go until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. And we got a guest right about now. Ladies and gentlemen, out to California we go in the lovely musical stylings of Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Bubs. Hello, Alex. From the West Coast to the. Uh is almost as expensive as the town you live in, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, is every, uh, 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 now you don't have as big an expense because you've got uh, pretty good, uh, decent, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, rent, rent control. Rent control. You're paying, yeah. what, 900 a month, did you say? Uh, seven. Seven. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was off by $200. Who gets now an apartment? Now w- and Medicare, so. But who gets a uh, poli- who gets a uh, uh, an apartment, okay, for for seven hundred dollars in New York in San Francisco anymore? Uh, just people like me that have been here forever, I guess. If- yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's uh, it's it's uh, you've been there forever. How long have you yeah. been in this apartment? Hey, it's eighty five. God, thirty. Geez, yeah, over thirty years. Over thirty years. That's a lot. That's and I'm a, sick of it. Huh? And I'm sick of living here. You're sick of living here. You're thinking of moving? Well, yeah, it's, but I'm kind of trapped now because everything's so expensive. Well, I'm, I, 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 even if I move it out in the hinterlands, I couldn't afford it. So. Well, I'm trapped in New York City. Same way, you know? Um, yeah, we are. We can't move. You can't move because if I move, I'm not going to find anything. Well, this is free right now, but let's say I get it for 1000 a month or something because that's what I should be getting it for. Uh, but let's say that happens, okay? What? I can't move out of here. Anything else would cost me, you know, five thousand dollars a month. I know. So you know, you're you're kind of trapped. You either live here or you move to Sheboygan. Yeah, at least you've got. It sounds like a huge apartment. I got the studio. So. Yeah. Well, actually, I could fit probably your apartment in my living room. Wow. I mean, how many square feet are you? Oh, it's probably 400, 500. Mine's 2,500. Gee, that's bigger than a house. In some cases, yeah. Yeah, it really there's is. A lot. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of houses that are like 12, 1,500. Yeah, yeah. So, so you got a, a great, at least you got a great, see, I'm so bored and stuck in this little, I feel like I'm in uh, those guys that get convicted of murder where they put them in a small cell 23 hours a day yeah yeah well it uh you know you, you feel like uh, the um the what do you call it the unabomber the you unabomber. Yeah, you're kind of living like the unabomber he's probably got a bigger cell than your apartment <laughs> that's probably why i never st- i'm always out i'm like pretty much here to sleep you know it's funny they, they take these people and they put them in a in a cell and then they keep them there 23 hours a day for the rest of their lives. Now, why don't they just kill them? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like you're burying them. It's really a form of burial. Oh, I would think that's. Uh, yeah, I would think a death penalty would be better. That's I, that's cruel. That is cruel and unusual to pen somebody up in a those small cells. And I think uh, many of them actually go insane. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I I just. Uh, uh, I, I I just don't understand uh, the whole the whole thinking behind that. I mean, let's face it. Uh, you know, why are we sending people to prison as a punishment? I don't think it's meant to be a punishment. You're sending them for rehabilitation, and that is not rehabilitative. And when you give somebody a life sentence, how 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 much rehabilitation is that? You know? Yeah, I think our justice system's highly overrated. It, our country's highly overrated. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was saying last night uh, that I believe that, you know, we're kind of living in a banana republic now uh, because our president is acting like any tin horn dictator would. You know, I can do this. I'm the president. The, the press is lying to you. 
uh, you know, all the things that dictators do, discredit the press, you know, jail your enemies, things like that. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's, we, we're getting there. And uh, I don't like it. It makes me cry. Well, we're be definitely becoming third world. I mean, there's yeah. thousands of people in the street. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just we have all kinds of problems that are created by our own social ethic. You know, the reason you've got uh, people living in the streets in San Francisco isn't because all of a sudden there's a homeless crisis. You, they're living in the streets because really the society doesn't give a shit. You know, and they could solve the problem, but they're not going to. No, they're, they just let it go. So. Yeah, they just let it go. So, you know. Now, as I called Bubs and he picked up the phone, he said, uh, uh, let me turn down the TV set. I'm watching Wendy. Oh, I'm watching Wendy <laughs> no, it, Williams. It, it just happened. I was watching the news and then she came on. I thought, oh, God, I just forgot how bad that was. Well, when I first heard about Wendy Williams, um, I immediately thought of my old friend Wendy O. Williams of the Plasmatics, uh, who committed suicide a few years back. And well, I was on uh, your show with her in New York. Yes. Wasn't she the sweetest woman you've she ever met? She was very met? sweet, yeah. I mean, if she goes on stage, she was going on stage with chainsaws and, and hacking cars apart and, you know, uh, band-aids on her nipples, you know, shit like that, right? Yeah. And then in, in personal life, she was like the sweetest, most demure. Really, didn't you find her just absolutely adorable? Yeah, we got along really well. And I was, uh, you, again, you don't think someone like that's going to commit suicide. So it was kind of shocking. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, uh, the, the last thing I ever saw of Wendy was as we got through with that interview, I got in a car, a cab, and I was driving down the street, and she was walking down the street, and I looked at her, and she was wearing, I think, a, a navy pea coat. And I said, that is one very cute, adorable woman. You know, and it's a side of her that the public never saw because the side they saw was this, you know, audacious, uh, uh, chainsaw-wielding, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh -huh. I mean, it, it was really, uh, and I, I loved her dearly. I mean, I really did. And, you know, you know, when I first met her, they were working a sex show on 42nd Street. Uh, Rod Swenson, who later became, I don't know if he ever married her, but it was certainly her, her lifelong love, the guy that she lived with and, and had a relationship with. Uh, he was a, kind of an artist, and he went to 42nd Street and he started doing these things with Wendy, uh, in which, for instance, she'd be fucking another woman in... Uh, she, he would do videos, and then we would edit the videos. Uh, but it was like, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, two women uh, fucking each other in 100 pounds of peanut butter. <laughs> you know, and I, and I said to him, I said to him, geez, you know... Uh, this when this was all going on the shows he was doing he was doing little vignettes like the uh, the uh, sh uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it? the uh, the dairy maid and the sheep dog and they have a guy dressed up as a sheep dog and she was the you know, and and he would fuck her on stage and it would be windy i've got i've got uh, uh, shots of her doing her act and i said to him i said you know something this is art because it really was it was conceptual art and the stuff that he was doing on video was conceptual art the women in peanut butter and things like that and he said yeah he said this is exactly what I'm trying to do I said what he says I'm trying to bring art to 42nd street without them knowing it <laughs> you know that they were getting a dose of art mm -hmm. while they were sitting there trying to jerk off you know <laughs> Uh, but then he started this group called the Plasmatics with her as the lead in it. And um, that group became very, very well known and very, very popular and sold a lot of records. And, and then she made movies. She was in, they, they had her, oh, I don't know, in some prison movie. But she always on stage had this persona of rough, tough, kick ass, chainsaw wielding, spit on you, cunt. Okay, and off stage, the person you met, this absolutely sweet, demure human being, 
Uh, it was amazing. It was just absolutely amazing. But anyway, and she made some money. Yeah, that was the Wendy O. Williams I knew. And then she went and committed suicide. She went out into the woods. She loved her. She loved animals. She loved woodland animals, and she would go through the woods feeding the animals. Right. And when she decided to commit suicide, that's where she committed suicide. She went out into the forest with her little animal friends and blew her brains out. It's very sad. It's very sad. And then I, I spoke at her, uh, at her, um, not wake, it was like a, it was at CBGB's and they had a memorial to her. And they asked me to come to New York and I and speak. And I, so I flew into New York to go speak at Wendy Williams uh, Memorial. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Loved her. Just loved her. Just adored her. Um, uh, I remember when we were editing these videos at 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, she and, 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 and Rod would come and we'd sit there editing the videos. And and then she sometimes go well. I gotta I gotta go home because uh, uh, he had to stay and keep editing. So she would go down to the street and all. I saw her do it. All she had to do was because of the way she was dressed and everything. She looked like a hooker on the street because she just come from her show at the Show World and on Forty Second Street. And she just wave her hand, and five cabs would like almost slam <laughs> into each other trying to uh, trying to get her. But uh, God, I loved her. I just adored her. Well, so anyway, this big fat cow named Wendy Williams comes on television. <laughs> and I'm going, how dare you sully the name, you fat pig? You know, am I fat shaming, by the way, with this? <laughs> You're body shaming. All I know is I look at Wendy Williams and I go, you know, she's not just, she just doesn't have big tits. She's fat, you know. Uh, and But she'd, be, she'd become a big, big star for a while. I, I kind of understand why. I mean, she's kind of like the woman who sits there with other women and gossips. Right, yeah. You know? And I think what she does, you know, I disagree with you. I think she does it well. I don't know that I like what she does, but she does it well, whatever it is, you know. Um, Wasn't like, she in radio before this? Yeah, she, was, she was a radio person before this, yeah. In fact, I have to give her credit. She got into this, you know, at a time when most people in my business would figure time is running out because I'm getting too old for the business. And she went into TV at like over 50, I think, you know. I think she's approaching 60. Maybe she's over 60. Uh, and, and, and became very successful at it. So I got to hand it to her in that respect, you know. I have to hand it to her, and I'm incredibly jealous, all right? <laughs> I am looking at the temperature right now. Guess what the temperature is in New York City? Yesterday, I'll give you a clue. Yesterday, it was like 73, okay? What do you think it's going to be today? It's going to be 80. Try 90. Okay. And then, what do you think it's going to be tomorrow? So it's going up, let's say 95. No, 60. Okay. I mean, no wonder you get sick in this town. I mean, it's hot one day, it's cold another day, you know? So. Yeah. At least you got a giant apartment to hide from it. Yeah, I guess, yeah. With my aching feet and my uh, my neuropathy. Good oh, boy. You know, your rent control battle, <laughs> I think, is the longest legal thing <laughs> since that trial in the onion field. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it isn't. It isn't a rent control fight. It, 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 it uh, I hate to explain this again. It's very, it's kind of complicated. We rent. We thought we were renting an apartment. Turns out this guy actually was subletting it to us, even though we didn't sign a sublet agreement, which you have to do if you're subletting an apartment. And there's certain rules in subletting. For instance, you can't charge more than you're paying for rent. Okay. And, and you can't do it for more than two years. Well, we got a three-year lease at double what he was paying. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then the, the landlord tells him he's got to get rid of us because he illegally is, is, is subletting to, to us, and he hasn't lived in that apartment for a certain amount of time, and he keeps subletting it and subletting it. And so then they said, you got to get rid of them. Otherwise, we're kicking you out. 
So then he told us, you're going to have to move out. And we went out and lawyered up, and the lawyer said, this is what's called illusory tenancy. Uh, you never signed a sublet. You signed a lease, because I have a lease for three years, which is not a sublet, for double the money, which is not a sublet. And, uh, um, you, you, know, you know, this is, is what's called illusory tenancy. He's pretending to live there, but he's always renting it out to other people, and that's against the law. And we said, well, what's, what's, the, uh, what, what's this, uh, the end total of this? He says, oh, well, yeah, you get... You get all the overage, all the of the money over his rent that you got charged. He has to pay you back, plus treble damages. That's the law. Wow! And so you're gonna make him do. So, so it, what it is is he sued us and the landlord, and of course we had to sue him back. All right. So really the fight is between him and the landlord, and once they get things settled, then I guess we can make our deal. And we're in a very good shape. We, we did nothing wrong, okay? So. For the 84th time on this program, that's the story. It's, a, it's very complicated. Who and this has been going on how many years? I think we're in our seventh year. That's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, I thought, hey, a year or so, this will all be solved. Or maybe when everybody lawyers up and talks with each other, it'll all get solved. Then every, oh. you know, it's not us that's being stubborn. We're saying we're ready to make a deal. What, what do you want? You know? And they're going, they're fighting each other, and they won't give up. And meanwhile, we're in the middle, and we can't give up either. So, well, it, that's, again, the legal system, nothing moves quickly. Well, I think it should. You know, I think something like this is. To begin with, something like this clogs up the court. So this is yeah. Uh, that could your your case could have been settled in a month. This is minutiae, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is not a big deal. And and why in the world, if it's not a big deal, is it such a big deal? And everybody gets gets screwed in this in this deal. Um, uh, uh, you know. Uh, but all I want to do, all I want to do, is to be able to settle this thing. No, I have this place, you know. But at the rate I'm going, I'm going to be dead before they come to a solution on this. So. Well, that'll be a victory. Huh? You'll, that means you won. Yeah, I, I won, yeah, if I, if I die before it's over with. I won. That's what I'm going to say on my deathbed. <laughs> I won. You know. It's, a, it's terrible. It's just, it just goes on and on and on and on. But. If things go right, and maybe I'll be paying the same amount of rent you do. So, you know, it's because there's another factor here that the landlord didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't keep, he has to post with the city every year how much the rent has gone up. And if he doesn't, he's in violation of the law. And when he finally does, file it he can only file it as high as you would have had it before so in 2003 he they quit sending these things to the city and so the clock stopped at that point according to my lawyer and really what the rent should be he said your rent right now should be if we had a a judge agree with us that the clock stopped your rent should be five hundred dollars wow you know, he said, but I think I can get you a thousand. He said, but you know, they're not entitled to anything because they didn't register it, and they had to. So that's uh, that's uh, that's what's all about, folks. That's our. That would be incredible. It would be incredible. Yeah, it would be it would be wonderful. But anyway, so that's our that's our little rent story, folks, for the eighty fourth hundredth time. Yes, but it's fun to hear about it. It's, it's, uh, well, I've never heard it, of anything it, going that long. In, it may in be court. fun, Larry, to hear about it, but it's not fun to go through it. I can't imagine. A anyway, no. getting back to Wendy O. Williams. So uh, you said, I'm watching Wendy O. Williams. And I'm thinking to myself, this is like the time my wife walked in and I, was, I, was, I had just watched Jeopardy, which is the smartest show on television, mm -hmm. right? Game show on television. What's the stupidest game show on television? What you you flipped out? What's the what? The stupidest. 
uh, 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 game show on television. Oh, there's so many. Most game shows are so annoying. Uh, I'm not even up on the current. Well, I mean, Price is Right. I, no, I uh, I think the stupidest one is, uh, what do you call it? Wheel of Fortune. And Wheel of Fortune comes on right after Jeopardy in every market. Or they were reversed, you know. In some markets, Jeopardy goes on after Wheel of Fortune. But basically, it's Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune. So I'm watching Jeopardy. And uh, it's over. They've just finished with the final Jeopardy. And the theme is playing. And all of a sudden, it's, uh, you know, the opening to Let's Make a Deal. And, and Marjorie walks in either from outside or, or because she was in another room and she walks in and she says you're watching let's make a deal <laughs> and ever since she keeps saying your favorite show was on I said what favorite show she said let's make a deal I said it's not my fate I hate let's make a deal it's a stupid show that is a bad one yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, those two people, she's been turning numbers, and he's been spinning wheels for, like, I don't know how many years now. But he is just, he he's looking long in the tooth, too, you know. And she's got, uh, she looks okay. You know, she's all right for an old broad, mm-hmm. you know. So. But Well, I think Merv Griffin, didn't he develop, he developed Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. That's right, and that's why they were on at the same time, you know, right after each other and whatever. And then they were bought up when um, when he died, or maybe before that, they were bought up by Sony. So uh, it, it, those shows have lasted forever. My God, they just keep going on and on and on and on. They made a fortune off of Oh, yeah. Yeah, they really did. Oh, look, I looked on my watch. It, it says 90 degrees. I also have Mickey Mouse. He tells the time. Listen. It's one twenty two. <laughs> yeah, but Mickey wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't talking for quite a few days because they upgraded the watch and everything, and somehow they fucked up on Mickey talking, and so he wouldn't talk. And I called um, um, Apple, and they were very good. They kept calling me every day uh, to. Uh, 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 we're working on it. Don't worry. Uh, you, you know, we'll let you know when it's happening. And all of a sudden, they did an upgrade on the watch because they saw. And and in the upgrade thing, it says fixed a problem where Mickey and Minnie don't talk. So apparently, I wasn't the only one complaining. And uh, Mickey now talks. So it's one twenty three. See. Let's hope Mickey doesn't listen. I spent six hundred dollars on a watch just so it could go. It's one. <laughs> well, yeah. you save that in rent. So I'll tell you something. This, this Apple Watch uh, never have had buyer's remorse. I love this watch. You know, I mean, it, it, when I'm when I'm walking, I put a little workout thing on to tell me how many miles I've walked and how fast I walked and you know what my blood pressure is at the moment. Or my my beats per minute rather are at the moment. I mean, it's it's a great little watch, and I also can do an electrocardiogram on it, and you know, so I'm happy, you know. Oh, your EKG that'd be amazing. No, yeah. that you you do that. You just put your you start the program. They put your finger on the on the the you know the watch stem, and I think you that's all you have to touch. And then you just hold it there. And it comes back with an EKG. Now maybe it's an ECG, it could be, but electrocard. It's an electrocardiogram, and uh, you know that's nice. And then you can also it, does it, it tell you if it's normal, or do you have to send it to well, the doctor? Well, if it, if it's bad, if it's bad, I mean it'll tell you if it's kind of bad or whatever. But you can then uh, go to your iPhone and have it make a uh, a readout that you can send to your doctor. Okay, that's very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, I wish they would do more things like that. They, 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 they're working on more health things for this watch. I mean, if you're getting a, a defibrillation or something, the watch will be able to go off and tell you, you know, you're having AFib. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's not bad. 
you know, or either that. Or, you know what happens? It knows, it, especially when you're going to fall or when you fall. And so if I suddenly do something fast with the watch, it'll suddenly say, do you just fall? <laughs> and I go, no. <laughs> but it asks, do you want us to call an ambulance? Really? Yeah. 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 That I've fallen and I can't get up isn't a problem anymore. <laughs> you know, it's just... Uh, well, it all saves them lives. So. Well, I'm happy to know it's it's good to know it's there. You know, yeah. what the hell? Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. What have we done? We've just talked about the same stuff I always talk about. Yeah, my fucking like rental problem. Rent fly by. Yeah, when you tell the rent stories, the time flies by. Thank you, Bub. See you, Thanks, ne- see you next week. You got it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that was Larry Bubbles Brown. We love Larry, don't we? We love Larry a lot. We, we, I'd marry Larry. No, I wouldn't. No, no, no. I'm already married anyway, so I can't do that. <laughs> anyway, uh, I remember the time that uh, Albert and I were going to get married. Does anybody remember that story? Okay, well, we'll we'll tell you about it sometime if you've never heard it, because it's another one of those stories you can't repeat enough, right? Uh, And it shows what a lack of sense of humor the people over at at Sirius XM had, because they wouldn't go with our idea. We were going to get married. Yeah, but anyway. So, uh, listen, you know, I've got this new opening, and uh, again, I screwed up on it because I didn't have my volume up, because it comes up on a different pot. And... um, here, let me adjust my audio here going out. There we go. All right. There we go. Okay. Well, that's the way it should be. I'm using a new encoder tonight to send the show out. Anyway, uh, I, uh, I uh, um, uh, did a little uh, little work here, and I, I made up a new opening. I, I did the opening last night, which was new, but then I, then I improved upon it. And uh, just in case you didn't see it at the top of the show, uh, I want to show you what a wonderful thing I did. Watch this. Wait, well, see, I get. Yeah, see? Got the theme and everything. And look, I, what I did, I put uh, New York behind my Alex Bennett ramble now. So that's my uh, whole new uh, new th- way of doing stuff. Anyway, I'm also trying to um, uh, get my uh, audio just right here so that we get uh, a decent amount of uh, good audio going out. And I'm using a, a, a new system that I have to use because next week... Uh, they come out with the new uh, Catalina, which is the new operating system for uh, Apple. And, uh, you know, uh, they will not allow me to use uh, NiceCast, which is the encoder I was using. It just won't work, okay? Uh, and so I have to use this new thing, which is the same company that makes NiceCast put out, which has, it's okay. It's not as good as the other one. Uh, it's got a few problems that I've told them about, and they've done nothing about it. So, anyway, um, but uh, nevertheless, it works, and uh, it maybe I hope the sound's going out okay tonight, uh, and uh, you're enjoying what I'm talking about. Listen, uh, 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 it's a feel-free night, uh, and then I got a what? Who who wrote me and told me they weren't going to call tonight? Oh, Patrick isn't going to call tonight. So I may be sitting here with absolutely no callers at all. I don't know, you know. And if I don't get callers by, say, or a decent amount of callers by 11 o'clock Eastern, uh, I'm just closing the thing down. I'm tired of this happening. Um, and we've got Jeff away and, and so on. Well, here comes, uh, here comes Charlene Martinez. Uh, nice of her to join us. Let me see here. Let me uh, give her a, uh, a little piece of the action here. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go, and uh, um, she's adjusting herself as well. So, okay, you all you all adjusted. Okay, wait a minute. Here comes Charles Wallace. Uh, he's calling, so I put him in the second spot. Here we go with Charlie. Um, let me see here. Well, I have to cancel again. 
Cancel. I want to be Charles Nelson Riley. You're going to be Charles <laughs> Nelson Riley. I see. Oh, there. No, he's there. He's there. He's there. Okay, because I think he was in that spot. I think you were in that spot last night, right? You're in the second spot. Yeah, that's where I was. Yeah, time. that's where Falling you were. So, how do you like my spiffy new opening for the show? Oh, Alex, I love it. I saw it last night. Yeah. And I said, "Wow, that's really like that's on the ball." Yeah, I like it. Yeah, you know, this is the this is the new and improved version, the one I yeah. sh showed tonight. Um, yeah, that one's even better. Yeah, yeah, it, it keeps getting it, better. Yeah, I mean the, the the Alex Bennett ramble is now against the uh, skyline of New York and. Uh, uh, the other one I did quickly, and and also I changed it to from uh, Harlem in uh, New York City, live from Harlem in New York City. So here, here we the are. The Harlem penthouse. Yeah. I was going to go out at night and take a picture of my building, and then you know use that as the background, right? Or have uh, or one of the backgrounds. But the problem is they put one of these these scaffoldings around the building. Oh, that, oh. that's horrible when it's, that. Yeah, it's like they put braces on my uh, teeth or something like that, you know. And How so long it looked, the scaffold's going to be up, you don't know? Uh, about a year and a half. Oh, and they, wow. And they, and they haven't even started doing anything. I don't know what's yeah. with these landlords. Are they paying for scaffolding that they're not, it's just not being used, okay? So, anyway, if, if you live in New York, you're used to what I'm saying. Yeah, I understand. I had friends that owned a store downtown yeah. in the East Village, mm -hmm. and uh, it ruins business when they do that to the store, you know? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so it also ruins business if you happen to be next to Trump Tower. Uh, <laughs> oh, they all those people, I think Tiffany's was having problems and so on. Well, they put those garbage trucks around it like a wall, right, like a fortress yeah. when he was uh, in New York. Yeah. And then they said that they were asking people... If they were shopping in Trump Tower, they'd let them in. Oh, like, you know, put yourself on mute. Uh, wait a minute. Put yourself oh, on Ray mute, Ray. Hey. Yeah. Put yourself on mute. I can. You're, you're very noisy. Okay. You're very noisy. Okay. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me let me get him a spot here on the in the uh, in the uh, uh, thing here. You know, Alex, my husband called me for, like uh, FaceTime mm -hmm. from New York before he got on his bus tonight, mm -hmm. and he was doing what Ray does. And I said, "Oh my God, you're Ray Renati, and you're making too much noise." <laughs> well, <laughs> well the and then I said, the "Call me later when you get uh, you know, when you're home and get you know, get off the thing." Well, well the problem is he's out a lot, and when he's out, what happens is, oh, you're making me dizzy with that, Ray. Uh, <laughs> when, when you're out. Uh, the the phones have a tendency to, a tendency to suck all the sound out of a room that it can, right? And then if you start talking, of course, he, if he were to start talking to us, that, that noise level would go down. But if he's just walking and he's got it on, so I, I have him mute it while he's not talking. But certainly, anytime you want to talk, you just unmute and we'll be fine. Oh, hey, for the second night in a row, my word. We have, wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, I, I don't know. Hey, what happened to Renati? Renati, are you there? I see him. I'm oh, here, oh, I'm oh, here. Oh, it's you're really still dark. There. Oh, it's just really dark. Yeah, there it is. You're just. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's really dark. I'll put it on mute. Kathleen? It's, I'm near the freeway. I'm near the freeway, so it's noisy. Wait a minute. Kathleen, well, was, a bike tonight, Kathleen was calling. No, I'm then walking. She, then she disappeared. Kathleen, are oh, you there? Shruti? No. She'll call back, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, Schmoody, it was great to see her last night, Alex. Yeah. After all, you know. all the years of talking about Schmoody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe she'll, uh, 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 Kathleen, uh, yeah, we missed uh, Kathleen, it says. And she's not there. Are you there, Kathleen? No. No, because I'd have at least a, a, a thing that, you know, rep a representation of a caller. Uh, because uh, her, uh, well, anyway, I'm out of it. Uh, wait a minute, here we go. Here she comes. Here she comes. Let me see here. Are you there, Kathleen? No? No, she just uh, doesn't uh, seem to... Oh. We can't seem to get her. Uh, Kathleen, try calling us using Skype. Don't use the phone. Apparently, there's some problem with the phone, and I don't mm. know what it is. Oh, well. Yeah, she was great when she was Skyping. I liked it. You know, yeah. she looked great. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, wait a minute, you know, I'm so, uh, if, if you're listening, uh, Schmoody, uh, just call using Skype. Uh, don't call using your phone because it says Kathleen Halstead, which means you're using your phone. She had a great uh, Marvel 
T-shirt yeah. on. It was nice. Yes. By the way, let me ask you, uh, Ray, uh, where are you that it's so dark we can barely see you? I am out on the Baylands, as I often am, but there, there's no moon out, and uh, and it's kind of overcast, so there's just no light. Oh, here we go. Now I'm under a... Yeah. Normally it's oh, lighter out here. Yeah. yeah Is now the dog we... with him? Yeah, the dog's here. You know, see the doggy? Yeah, and let's to, see the doggy. Have to switch. Yeah, there's the, there she there, is. There, oh. There's the doggy oh. out on the walk. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Shmoody, if you're listening, call us using the Skype. Uh, you, apparently, you were trying to use your phone, and it, uh, every time I would answer it, it wouldn't it wouldn't connect to the to the system here, which is a a problem from time to time. Um, by the way, everybody else, uh, you know, it would be a good night for you to call if you've never called before, so you can get used to how it's done. You know, um, and you, don't forget to tell them you're extra extra nice. To new people. I'm very nice to new people. <laughs> I'll even, if you call, I'll blow you. You know. <laughs> well, virtually. Oh, oh, and it's oh, feel wow. free. Well, and it's feel when you free. become a regular, you get abused a lot. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me put the set, turn the sound down just a little bit. Well, this is, uh, I think this may be Schmoody on the phone. Hello? No. Actually, I had hit the uh, call Gabnet button. Oh. And all it would do was make some weird song, and I could hear you trying to get me on, but it never went through. Well, here's what you do. Go. Are you, are you near your computer? Yep. Okay, go to your computer. You got Skype all loaded up and ready to go? Yeah. Okay, and, and see where it says. In fact, probably if you go over, you've got, already got us on your list as GabNet Live. Because yeah. you called it last night. Just click on that. Just okay. click on that, and then click on the uh, on the telephone. Uh, uh, not the telephone, but the camera, and that will probably connect you to us. That's exactly what I did. It said call Gabnet, you know. So I clicked no, that. Did the, no, no, I did the same thing don't push, I don't, did last don't, night. Don't push the call Gabnet. Uh, that you you went what on the website? You push call Gabnet. Yeah, no, on Gabnet. Yeah. No, don't don't do it there. Do it on okay. your Skype. You see where you have Gabnet Live from last night? There, it's listed on the side. Should be. Are you there? Yeah, I'm looking. <laughs> She's looking. I'm having technical under, difficulties. Yeah. What, what? Under contacts. Under contacts. See where it says contacts? On the left-hand side, there's a column. And it's probably got some, some contacts in there. Right? It did, but now it doesn't. What do you mean Damn it, it What do you mean now it doesn't? Okay, so I'm on Skype. Yeah. Well, just... Um, um, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll fart around with oh, it. No, at the very top, where, where, what is the thing at the very top, guys, that they you have? It's, uh, it's like where you, you can put in the words GabNet Live, searching, search, the search uh, yeah. thing. Just right. type in GabNet Live. Okay. On Skype. Okay. Well, okay. I will find it. Okay. Search. Go up to search. Are you there? You know what? The site I'm on doesn't even have search. What do you mean site? It's on Skype. No, no, no. I, I, She's are, on the Skype website. Are you on the, the Skype app. website? That's... Uh, see, I was on GabNet. Yeah. And it... And it, I tried to get on like I did last night, but for some reason it, it, um, it well, because do I it. think you're not using the Skype, you're not using the Skype app. That's why. Okay. Okay. Here, I've got you calling here. Yeah, that's why. I've got you calling, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't pick you up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let me get, let me get out of this and go back in. Okay, so you go, you just uh, just uh, load up uh, the Skype app. Okay. And you should be fine. She, uh, I get. I guess there is a, on the, there's an online web presence that Skype has, where it's a it's a yeah. web version of Skype, and it sucks. It's really all wrong. Okay, here, yeah, Skype. It says GabNet Live. This is where you talk. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. So you okay. click on that, and on the up there is a is a camera and a microphone yep. or whatever. Click on the yeah. camera. Click on the camera. 
There yeah, we go. Call. There we go. Woo! Let me see okay, here. Okay, bye. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Is she there? She's there. Yep. Yep. Okay. Now, you know. There you are. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, hang up the phone. You know, we get we get you we get a W. And 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 move your camera down so we can see your full a little bit of your uh, torso and we just you, you, we need just have yeah, your neck up like that. <laughs> yeah, we got to see. We, what did you say? Yeah, we got to see your guns. As she, he yeah, said. that was impressive. Yeah, she had some guns. Oh, yeah, she was. She, do you still have the muscles? Do you still work out? Yeah, Kathleen? I still work out. Okay, she, look, look at that. that. Wow. Look at that. Look Whoa. at that. <laughs> did you see that, Ray? I did. We didn't. I did. We, she and I didn't used to have sex. She just bench pressed me. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. God. Yeah. Damn. Oh, you mean were you married to her as well? No, I wasn't married to oh. her. No. no. Oh, this is Schmoody. This is Schmoody. Oh, that's Schmoody. Oh, I, I remember that from years ago. Yeah, okay. that's the world. Hi, Schmoody. That's the world. I heard all about you like many, many years ago. That's a world famous Schmoody for Christ's sake. All righty. Sake. Yeah. Cool. You know. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, you know, she, she had muscles and everything. Boy, I just, I looked so skinny and gaunt next to her. <laughs> you know, it was amazing. It was just amazing. Uh, but um, we, she and I, you know, what she and I would do? We would have farting contests, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. And 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 we would see who could do the worst thing to the other when it came to farting, and I think I won the day we were going up. I had a a, a fire kind of a fire not a fire escape but it was a fire ramp yeah. that went up to my apartment from the garage, and I'm walking up and she's walking behind me and she's nose she's her nose is right <laughs> near my ass, and I let one rip. Yeah, it was fire in the hole, no warning. <laughs> Did you ever accidentally shit your pants? Uh, Just well, wondering. Oh, I've had that happen, but not while uh, she, sorry. not while I was trying to win the farting contest. Oh, not no. while in competition. Well, that's no. good. Okay. No, no. A shark. No. Yeah, we did. We did. We were, It was like she was like hanging out with a guy. I mean, oh. you know, we, a lot of guy stuff with us. You know, <laughs> uh, but you weren't a drinker either, were you? Nope. So that's where we were really perfect. You know, because yeah. most women I know drink. I think they drink because they have to put up with me. That's what I think. Okay. You know, Marjorie comes home at night. She's got to have a glass of wine. And, I, you know, I, I don't understand it. I, my, you know. So, you, so when I went with you, you never drank. And so uh, uh, that was perfect for me. Very I rarely. I mean, when we'd have the little Sopranos get-togethers. Yeah. And we'd go up to Luca's Deli and get some stuff. Once in a while, I'd get a bottle of wine. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, I didn't much care for it. That's right. And and uh, um, uh, and and I, the great thing about going out with somebody who doesn't drink, too, is when you go out to dinner, you pay about 25% less. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because what they charge for booze, yeah. just a glass of wine is like 12 bucks now. Yep. You know, and if we go out and, sh and, and, and a girlfriend has... Uh, uh, two glasses of wine that's 25 bucks right there yeah. easily you know and, and so that and that's a price of dinner so you know it, 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 uh, i was always happy to go with a woman who didn't drink i haven't had a drink in two months i quit drinking did you really yeah why'd you quit drinking uh well you know i'm trying to get off this clonopin which is hell on earth sometimes yeah. like today it was yeah and uh, you're not supposed to drink when you're getting off of it because it just makes things worse. Oh, really? And so, yeah, well, yeah. I would think drinking made it worse. Yeah, the drinking makes the withdrawals from the clonopin worse. Yeah. Well, I've got some new pills. That's why I stopped. I've got some new pills I'm taking, and they're a controlled substance, I think. But it's, uh, uh, it, it's pregabalin, which also is known as Lyrica. I hate those names. Dr. Bennett. Uh, Lyrica saved me once. I had this horrible nerve thing in my in my back, and uh, I had the the Lyrica was like a miracle. Well, oh man! Well, this isn't like a miracle for me, but it does help. Uh, so I mean, I have the. What's I have it for, Alex? It's for the neuropathy that I have in my feet. I can't even. 
Oh, because yeah. I just got gabapentin. Are you going to stop? Well, that, well, here's the gabapentin, but I'm 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 not taking that. No. The gabapentin made me worse. Five years. I keep I keep all my drugs over here. You know? I was going to say. <laughs> you, you never know when I'm going to. Mm, I need them. You know? I think your pills made a lot of noise, Alice. What did you say? You're going to stop the gabapentin? Well, you can't do both because it, it because this is kind of a form of gabapentin. It's just. Uh, uh, stronger and better and different and so on. It seems to help a little bit. You know, not yeah, much. Yeah, but they, they, they both work on the same area of the brain, and they both have the same effect. So you can't it's take both of them. It's yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, originally, they both are. This one but, seems to get me a little high, you know? Yeah, uh, it used to make me sleepy. Yeah, um, may, oh, I sleep like a log on this stuff. And I, yeah. and I was, I having, I was having leg cramps at night about two or three times. And since I started taking this, I don't get them. So, see, this, hey, is, what we, this like, is what we okay. talk about now, Kathleen. Is old people well, shit. It's funny because you know when I do bodybuilding, a lot of times I have to take magnesium, or I have to take this stuff called uh, ZMA, which is zinc, magnesium, and aspartate. Otherwise, I get the cramps, especially when I do legs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, and I, part of the reason I have cramps, too, is because I've been on a low-carbohydrate diet for, forever, and low carbs will cause that, you know, will cause cramps. So. Well, right. I think Ray's leash is making noises. Oh, is it? Let me turn it off. Yeah, I hit, I hit my move goal on my, on my Apple Watch, and I haven't even been moving. So, you know, who knows? So. I've been doing physical therapy, Alex. Really? Uh, I have a torn meniscus. Remember? Oh, you I, had I had a torn meniscus. Oh, right. Did you ever tear a meniscus, Schmooty, in, in your working Yes, outside? I did. Yes. Jet skiing. Yeah. yeah. We got it on video. And it was, remember coming home and a friend of mine let me borrow um, his knee brace. Mm -hmm. And of course, our house was two stories. And uh, that whole night, I could hardly sleep. And the next day, I went into the emergency room and I showed up at UPS with a full leg cast on. Wow. I had the cast wow. on. For about two months, but I haven't had any problems uh, since. Meniscus. So. I had a torn meniscus, but it, it. What what I was what I was doing is I was on the floor in the kitchen or something, and I just twisted my leg under me, and all of a sudden I got this pain. It just was it was unbearable, and so I went to the doctor on the following Monday. And he said, hey, you tore your meniscus. Well, what do I do about it? And he, said, you're off to physical therapy. Yep. You know, and I did about three months of physical therapy, and finally it, it went away. It came back a couple of we I, weeks ago. I was on the floor doing some stuff with the computer, and I, I kind of tore it again, but it's better now, and it doesn't bother me. But for that... I had to have meniscus surgery. I had my really? removed. Well, for the mini torn meniscus, hold on a second. Uh, one of the things I had, and this stuff is really good. Where, where is it? What happened to it? <laughs> what? Oh, here it is. Um, th it's uh, this stuff. Wait a minute. Hold on. Got to put my earphones back on. I'm going to get a longer stuff, cord for my earphones. <laughs> uh, Volterran gel. Anybody ah. know that? And you put that yes, on. Yes, I just ordered that from Canada. Oh, How you, do you or, spell what, that? Or you, what? What? what uh, illegally or what? Uh, whatever. Yeah, because it's so expensive here. Yeah. yeah. It is. You know, it's one of those drugs you have to get an approval from your from your uh, I know. Uh, health. Prior authorization. So Prior I got off. it from Canada for yeah. a really cheap And I'm going, $30 hey, it's just fucking two. gel. You know, that's all it is. It you know, but it's got, it's, and, but it does uh, it does help with the pain in the leg. And so I had to, uh, I had this one doctor who said, every time you want a new uh, re-up on the prescription, you have to come see me again. So, but I, I, I've, been, I've been living with this uh, tube of it forever. But Voltaren, folks, if you're out there, I'm doing a commercial. Voltaren, ask your doctor for it by <laughs> name. Spell that. Uh, is, is really good at doing away with any kind of like pains you might have, you know, temporarily. It's really, really good. It, I, it's super popular in France. People use it all the time. What is it? What's and in it's it? It's really cheap. Uh, it's got like a, what is it, Alex? I forget. But. Well, well, it's uh, it's got. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what, it doesn't smell like that tiger's balm, does no, it? No, no, it doesn't have a bad smell at all. It works yeah, way yeah. better. It, it works way better. Yeah. 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 Inactive yeah. ingredients. Do we want the inactive ingredients? No, active. Active. Yeah. It says, it says active. inactive ingredients, and that's all the ingredients they list. Carboner homopolymer type C. Cocoa. 
carpal plar plate? Forget it. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's got some alcohol in it. <laughs> yeah. Can you order it from Amazon or something? No, 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 no. no. You have to go to your pharmacy, and then then, then yep. you have to get a, a prior authorization oh, from, oh, your, prior. from your from your insurance company so that you don't have to pay the full price of it, which is what so would the what would the full that, price be? Ray, do you know? It was it was up like around like uh like around two or three hundred bucks in the United States for that thing right there. Really? Uh, yeah, and uh, in Canada it's twenty eight dollars, and I found a place where I didn't have to have a prescription. It's on the way. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and um, my normal place in Canada they even wanted a prescription, so I went. I found another and one. And how much did you have to pay for it? Uh, with shipping, thirty eight dollars. Mm. I can't and remember. If I had it here with prescription, it would have cost me probably two hundred and fifty dollars after well, insurance. Well, with my insurance, I I don't remember what I paid, but I didn't pay too any two hundred and fifty bucks for it. Otherwise, I would. Have well, said, you have Fuck you have it. that good insurance from the union. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't have it anymore. I, lo yeah. I lost it. This is what we talk about, Schmoody, these days. You know, at this age, you talk about I got this pain, I got that pain. Charlie's <laughs> missing some toes from diabetes. <laughs> Charlene's got well, all kinds of problems. Ray's got his set of problems. Well, we, I almost fell over. <laughs> we, uh, we, uh, Phil, who was on last night. I crashed night. into a pole. Okay. Nice. If, if Phil, uh, Phil, who was on last night, has no, has, doesn't have a prostate anymore, you know, we, we're, we're just a medley of, of uh, age-related. <laughs> how old are you now, Kathleen? Can I ask? Fifty-five. Fifty-five. So yep. you're you're just you're a child in this group. Yeah. You know. <laughs> like Charlie, who who is black, so he looks like he's thirteen. Uh, you're how old? Are you up in your seventies? Sixty nine. Sixty nine. My favorite course, number. Hey, how Sean's how, how, dad just turned seventy one. What? Who? Sean's dad. Oh really? My ex just turned seventy one and he was and he's still bodybuilding. I tell him he's probably the Jack LaLanne of Mazatlan, Mexico. Well, how about your parents? How old are your parents? Uh, my dad turned 83 because my dad and I shared the same birthday. And my mom uh, will be 79. Hmm. Okay. She was the same age I was. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible meeting your girlfriend's parents and they call you sir. <laughs> you know, I mean. Oh, it's... my parents adored you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, sir. Nice to have you over to dinner, sir. You know? Sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, As a matter of fact, the first time I had you over to my parents' house, it wasn't even completed. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful house, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it's up in up uh, on the coast. Yep, right. Mendocino Coast, Guadalajara. Highway Highway One, right? Yep. Yep. And and when you get there. It's like windy roads on the on the uh, uh, along the ocean. It's just yip, yip, yip. and but I had a I, uh, I had one of the first GPSs. You remember that? Yeah. And you would sit there and go curve coming up. And this was like at night curve coming up, and I would just go okay boom, and when, there would be the curve, you know. Uh, but 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 it's like Alex, this. It's what like were the, it's just like, what were the first GPSs like? You know how they call the first cell phone the brick? Uh, there well there was, was some the there was some guy on the roof who would yell. Rock ahead. That was the first <laughs> GPS. Uh, no, well, but, no. Remember ah. in your Acura, we used to call her Yoko because yeah, but, she sounded yeah, like. Yeah. What happened was in the oh, beginning they were all they made them all in Asia, right? And the woman, the voice that they had doing the the narration or whatever, the guiding, you know, was a Japanese accented woman. Yep. It was you. Well, turn left now, you know. In the half a mile, please make a left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so we called her. And it was always recalculating. Recalculating. Yeah. Recalculating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I love that. It was fun. I thought that I don't know what they have now. I, I I don't drive a car anymore. I haven't driven a car in. Well, you don't need. You get like Apple Play. That's what I got. Well, you can use your phone. Oh well, you know what I do. I use no. I don't in, use a GPS. I use the phone. Uh, yeah, that's right. They say, do you do you want our uh, our GPS? I'm gonna go fuck you. I'm not gonna pay five dollars a day for your goddamn GPS. And I plug my phone in, and it tells me, hey, you got five miles. Turn left. You know, you don't need it anymore. Um, so. Okay. You know, but I. Have, hey, you know, I, my last, 
Hmm? My last car was a Volkswagen mm -hmm. and uh, a Volkswagen and it had online GPS. It was hilarious. It would be like an American saying, OK, turn right on the next street, which is and then they had to voice over because they screwed it up or something. It would be like a German woman. So turn right at the next light, which is the Oregon Expressway. <laughs> and my son and I used to do it on purpose. We would just crack up. It was so hilarious. Well, I, this was I, just a couple of years ago. I just thought it would be a lot of fun. And, and you could, the, the, the car companies can make a lot of money if they have GPSs. And you can, you can have a choice of voices. And then they go out and hire major actors to do the voices. And I, I'd like to get one with, like, Patrick Stewart going, turn left at the next, uh, you know, corner. And then when you get there, he goes, make it so. Make it so. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I have the Cookie Monster on Waze right now. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah the Cookie Monster is telling me directions. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I see it. Somebody took my idea. They already have them. Uh, but uh, well, when the GPS first came out, didn't you have to buy like different cartridges? You were saying. Well, the, you, you had to, you had to when you when you went to the dealership, dealership. If let's say I was going out of the Western United States, okay, right. say into the Midwest, I would literally have to have them put in a different cartridge for that part of the country. Or I would, you could, I think you could even go in the back of the car and put it in yourself. But you had to buy them. They were like 79 bucks a piece or something like that. Do you remember this, Charlie? Like you, know? the, you have to update them to the maps. Like they charge you to update, you know. Yeah. If, if the maps are old. But you don't need it. Just use your iPhone. You know. Oh, I know. That's what I do now. I got Apple Play in the car and I just use yeah. the phone. But I haven't driven in something like two years now. I'm beginning to wonder if I remember how to drive. And then I said to myself, that's silly. If I got into a car, I'd immediately know what to do. It's like, you know. It's like a bike. Right. You know, yeah. Riding a bike. It's like masturbating. You never forget how to do it. <laughs> you know. Um, unless you've never masturbated. Like unless you've, uh, you've never masturbated? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, I thought. I, I, figured if, like, I figured if anybody jerked off, it was you, Ray. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a big jerk off. Because you've been married I'm how long? Back. You've been married yeah, how I've long? Yeah, I've been married 25 years. Well, that's because you so, masked. You know how, and you know what's made? I like one person when they interview them and say, why has your marriage lasted 25 years? And the guy goes, I masturbate a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's the su uh, marriage success, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I, at my age, I, I masturbate and nothing comes out. Just, I don't know, dust. You know. <laughs> Is it white dust? It's or dust. Is it kind of brown. Yeah. Just nothing, you know. What's <laughs> purples? Well, I'm on prostate medicine. Glitter. I'm on two forms of prostate Glitter. medicine. I'm on. Uh, I'm on. Uh, what is it? Uh, um, I, it? I forget what the name of it is. And it 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 kind of shrinks your prostate. And then I'm on Cialis, uh, which is great because it all it helps uh, give you a nice good urine stream. And I take it for the prostate, for the prostitutes, uh, but uh, it also gives me a, a boner. Many times an unwanted boner, but at, <laughs> nonetheless a, a boner, which is, you know. It's, it, 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 thank God for those boner pills, man, you know. <laughs> the other day my parents were talking about what medicines my dad has taken. Yeah. And he's like so clueless. And he goes, and then I got this Cialis. And my mom like changes the subject. <clears throat> And I just pretended like nothing happened. It was so hilarious. Your, fa your father's taking Cialis. Yeah, apparently. But yes. he's taking it. But don't you know he's taking it for his prostate? No, I know because he has prostate cancer. He does. But, you know, but they're not going to do anything about it because he's so old. Old, you know, he's going to die of something else before that. How old is he? Uh, he's only eighty. Let's see. I'm I'm fifty eight. He's yeah. uh. 83. Yeah, well, see, I, I probably have prostate cancer. It, 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 my, I think we're, we're working on it at my uh, uh, urologist. But the thing is that at my age, most guys who are my age, 70% of them will have prostate cancer at 80. Okay? And if they live to be 90, it's 100%. But it, but, oh, they, my dad's 81. but they don't do anything about it. They just watch it and make sure it doesn't get aggressive. And um, 
you know, the, but the, what they say to you is you're gonna die. You're you're gonna die of you'll, something else. You'll be and, dead first. And, and I'm going. Oh well, that's a you. nice thing to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know that this was maybe going to kill me first, and you're going to do something about it, you know. Uh, but uh, it, well, it, apparently, when you're older, it just it, it's so slow growing. Well, like once you're over, I don't know, seventy five or something, that it's just not worth doing anything yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. They always use uh, their figures and facts and everything to figure everything out. Yeah. But women don't have to have a gynecological exam like after. I think. I don't know. They don't even want to look at you anymore because the figures. Well, no, what it is, it's not that, that you're not going to get. It, it's not. Know, like no, it's not that cancer. you can't get something. It's just that no doctor wants to look at an old pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I gave you a good opening for that. One. <laughs> That's why you should always choose a blind gynecologist. You know, one who's like just good with his hands. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And then they'll. Just feeling around. Yeah, well, you know, Schmoody remembers me in a different context. Like, where can we get some coke so I can get high and we can fuck? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so. Uh, well, I, yeah, what, what old a, older age has given me is a certain amount of dignity where I'm not chasing pussy all the time, you know, and I can keep my marriage, all right? You know, because uh, I'm not going to cheat. Why? You know, you know, I'm getting to the point where I, I, I'm not going to cheat. Yeah, yeah. I would never cheat on Schmoody because she would have kicked the shit out of me. You know. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm not violent. She's, no, she, she's not violent. With all the, she, let's see those guns again. Let's see those. No, no come on. Give, give, us a, give us a flex. Come on. Uh, look at that. Look at that. Huh? Those are some guns. But it's just a shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How often do you work out? Uh, like three days a week. Really? Because I'll get big too fast. And I do it seasonally. Yeah, I'll, I don't get girlfriend because she uh, she works out twice a week when she can on, on Saturday and Sundays for about right. th three hours. Uh, you know, it's a good heavy workout. And uh, she... Uh, uh, she works out, and uh, she's not she's not that muscular. You know, she's really f rather thin. And, oh, you know. she's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I, I I think you can only do so much to build yourself up. And I I I I, I, I once went out and worked out. You don't you didn't even know me at this time. This was after I did this uh, schmoody, but I went uh, to um, a gym five days a week and worked out, and I actually had. I was, I was looking good, and then one day I was treading along on that bicycle and going, "What the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> you know, what is this getting me? Nothing. It's just getting me. I have to buy bigger shirts. That's all. You know, and uh, so I just gave up on it. You know, I and, do no cardio, none. Ugh. Really, I do. Ugh, the, I go boy. down to my uh, gym. I jump rope. I do have a speed jump rope, and that's about the only thing I do because it keeps everything firm. I just want to keep everything firm. Well, I go to my $15 gym, $15 a month gym, and I do, I do the bike, and then I just get the hell out of there. I do 25 minutes on the bike, and now I've gotten tired of that because, again, I'm sitting there going, what the fuck am I doing here? You know, it's, I'm going nowhere. I'm seeing nothing. So what I've done is I've started walking. But my feet are killing me because of this neuropathy. But I yeah. forced through anyway. And I, uh, um, uh, the other day, I went up a whole big giant flight of stairs that go up to Columbia University. And uh, I gave myself a real workout. And at least I saw stuff. Yes. You know? So, um, uh, and then I came back, my feet were killing me. But, you know. Because I walk to work, and then I'm with a third grader all day. So during recess and uh, especially she, she's, lunch recess, we, I'm running no. those kids all over the place. Let me just say, not she's saying that not because she she's not dating a third grader. Uh, <laughs> she's working as a teacher's assistant. Is that it? Yeah, I'm actually I'm a one-on-one -on -one para educator. They must uh, love you. They yeah. do. You know, because I mean, it, you you can do stuff that they wish they could. You know, you, you know, you, you, you're strong and you're big and you're, you know, 
Well, one time one of the tether balls got stuck up at the top of the pole, and so I, I had this little backpack on. This is when I was doing yard duty, and I handed my backpack to one of the kids, and I go, I haven't done this in about 40 years. And I went up the pole, locked my legs, unlocked it, and then I just let go and drop down. It was only about four feet. And all of a sudden there was this roar of applause behind me and I turned around <laughs> and all the kids in the picnic area like, they're probably like, holy shit! That old lady went up the pole. They were dying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I look at my hands, I go, well, they're all rusty. And as I'm walking to the bathroom, the other teachers are just like, fucking Halstead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, and, and by the way, if we talk about people who've had stuff like Charlie has had diabetes and had, uh, how many toes removed? Uh, six. And that was on one foot, six toes on one foot. That took a lot of doing. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, but uh, you, uh, you actually had breast cancer. Yep. Yep. Um, wow. Many, many years ago. Yep. And, and then my mom recently had it and uh, she survived. Yeah. And, and you got it at what age? 32. 32. Wow. Young. Yeah. yeah. But you know what she got for all of that? She got a brand new pair of tits. Yep. <laughs> and and she didn't think. I what, got a new front bumper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened was, and you told me the story, is that when it came time, I think you had, you, it was only one breast, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it, you, they had to do the, you know, what do we call it? Reconstruction. Yes. And they said, what size would you like them? <laughs> And you I said, just said, make them proportionate to my frame. Yeah. Made the order. And, and, and so they had to do the other one, too, because it was not proportionate yeah. to your frame. And they yeah, gave yeah. you the largest pair of implants I've ever seen in my life. I think <laughs> they had to drain the Pacific Ocean in order to fill the bags, you know. <laughs> uh, and they're saline, and because I bodybuild, the doctor put them underneath the muscle. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're pretty. They they were there. They were there. They're there. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and they've lasted all this time very nicely, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Did they do that expander thing that they do for that? Like, were you able to do that with the skin to expand so they could fit it in? Or no, well, they just put them in. Well, tell them what you were when you before you started before you had the uh, the. Um, I think I was on. like a. Thir maybe a 32 or 34 C. Yeah. Oh, and, wow, and, and what are you now? Uh, 42 D. <laughs> <laughs> but she was six one, so that was proportionate. Yeah. yeah. You know. Uh, my my niece Raven used to say, uh, "Auntie's got Auntie Omi has cherry cheeches, Mommy has apple cheeches, and Auntie Clathy has water lemons." <laughs> Are you happier now, you know, with, with these? Than you well, I was just happy I survived. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, to get, a, to get a, 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 them to tell you, you've got breast cancer at 32. It's got to be yeah. devastating. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, it was, you've got this, but it, you, it's been caught very early. So I wasn't, you know, devastated. You know, the doctor was reassuring and saying, we're going to be able to do this. Yeah. How long did the treatment take? Um, it was like a month. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Like radiation and all that stuff? Or? Nope, I didn't have to have any of that. Oh, that was good. Uh -oh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They just locked out. And you know, and it was my great, great, great uncle that, um. Oh, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, uh, uh, tell him about your great, great uncle. She has a very famous, in fact, in Chicago, there's this street named after him, yeah, right? Yeah, Halstead Street. So my. Holy shit. Yeah. My great 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 uncle was William Stewart Halstead, and so he graduated from Yale, and he wanted to go into medicine. Uh, did some work in New York at Bellevue Hospital, and then he and three or four other guys, he and three other guys, opened up Johns Hopkins. Oh wow! Did the first uh, gallbladder surgery, and he did it on his mom in his sister's kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, did the first breast um, removal surgery. Um, did the first, uh, let's see, gallbladder, breast, um, thyroid, mm -hmm. 
and some other stuff. Anytime you have surgery, it's a Halstead clamp that's clamping you. And he also introduced rubber gloves into surgery. He, he was the guy who came up with rubber, rubber gloves for surgery. Uh, up until then, yeah. they didn't use anything. By the way, speaking of rubber gloves, see? Look at this. <laughs> now, I, where did I get those? I always, anytime I'm in a medical, medical facility that has them, I steal them. Uh, Why do I, I steal them? Too. Not because I use them. I just steal them. While you're yeah. waiting in the doors. And so I, I got my flu the shot the other day when the guy was out of the room. Reach into yeah. the drawer. <laughs> yeah. Man, and, and the whole time William was a surgeon, he had been addicted to cocaine but needed to use morphine to make sure he stayed off the cocaine because he also introduced cocaine into dentistry. Wow. wow. So uh, he he was uh, he was very famous, and they they named a street after him. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, it, today a lot of the surgical procedures that you involve yourselves in, uh, uh, he uh, he was responsible for. But if nothing yeah. more, the rubber. I, I heard of the clamp. I remember the clamp. That's how I. That's how the Halstead clamp. Yeah. Yeah, I've called. heard that many times. Yeah. You know, yeah. Alex, you brought up the fact that before rubber gloves, they would just stick their hands there with nothing on it, yeah. like no sterile gloves. That's where all the sepsis comes from and stuff. Well, right? that's why people yep. died from surgery a lot. Yeah. You know, there just was it, nobody. It, I don't know. You who know, they laughed at Lister. All the surgeons were yes. like, "Ah, eh, blowing them off." Yeah, and 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 to think that it took your your great grand uncle or whatever he was, yeah, uh, to be able to come up with rubber gloves, a simple solution, okay, a very simple solution to solve the problem and to keep uh, keep things more anesthetic and more an antiseptic. Uh, it's yeah. wonderful, just absolutely wonderful. Well, when his head surgeon, who he ended up marrying, when she dip her hands into the carbolic acid, mm -hmm. um, when she had an eczema outbreak, it was extremely painful. So he telegraphed the Goodyear company and asked them if they could make two pair. Yeah. You know, thin enough to where they don't lose tactile function, and it worked out. Yeah. And now they're, it's, it's what they do. Oh, here, look who's here. Look who, uh, 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 we have a special guest uh, here. I, I don't know, he just decided to call. I guess, I guess he got through beating up all those people at the, uh, uh, at the, uh, what do you call it, cl uh, club. The, I mean, hold on a second, I gotta, I gotta cancel this and bring it back. Some of the, if I go He's too early, it, it doesn't come up. <laughs> he picked up his award and split. Yep, that's right. He, he beat up on all those old men uh, with his, uh, with his uh, <laughs> camera. Hold on a second. Uh, yeah. Let me see here. Oh, there, there, here, here we go. Uh, oh, you know what? I haven't had schmoodies on camera all night. That, uh, see, that's how I fucked up. I kept looking over here at the, uh, and I didn't notice that the audience wasn't getting, getting schmoody. Show them the guns again. Flex, no! Flex, no, just so, oh, so they can see it. They, wow. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm sorry, folks, if I, I didn't flip over to the, you know, to the, um, uh, They're like, holy crap, what kind of guns is she showing? Yeah, right, <laughs> right. So, anyway. Uh, <laughs> hey, Alex, does the audience go up when Schmoody's on and when Charlene's on, when we have the women on here? Well, last night we had a lot of people watching. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. tonight it's a little less, but, you know. Because there was no fill. Huh? Yeah, there, there was, was fill no last fill. night. Uh, yeah, there was fill last night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm talking about tonight. Oh. No. No. Well, it's not. Uh, a, it doesn't a, wait matter. I got to go over to my uh, Facebook page where it says it's a fill-free Wednesday and get rid of that. Okay. Well, there, it was. There we it go. Was. It was. You know, uh, I, I, I got out of there early. Yeah. Hmm? I got out of there early. I didn't submit a print this uh, this contest, and uh, I just had. A, I'm the print chair, so I had to. I'm the person that presents them, puts them on the light stand, and for the judge to judge but so once uh, there was 21 prints and once i was done with that i put away the equipment and i was out of there no okay yeah. they had like 90 projected prints to judge and i didn't put in a project ah. either well, i'm sorry folks that you haven't ha been able to see schmoody but now you do there she is that's her that's what she looks like uh, uh and uh, uh 
she's, uh, you know, I've kn how long have we known each other now? What is this now? Oh, okay, let's see. I 22? 22 years? Yep. You think so? What, what year did we first? Because I met you in October of 90, oh, no, 96. So it'll be just this October, it'll be 23 years. 23 years. Now, 96, I thought it was a little earlier than that because 97, I left the station, and that's when you and I went to Vegas together. But I guess it was well, about then. You know? Well, I met you prior to that because you had that contest. <laughs> and then, then when I got fired, I decided I'm gonna, we're going to take the, I'm going to take the uh, vacation of a lifetime. And you joined me on it. Yep. And we we went to uh, we went to Europe for three weeks, and what was one of the things that was great about it, okay, was that uh, uh, I knew somebody at the airline company who said, okay, just buy regular coach tickets, all right, and then I will upgrade you for your entire trip to first class. And that's exactly what happened all the way along my, oh, yes, uh, yes, you have coached, but yes, you've been upgraded to, uh, to first class. And we're, we're eating the, the shrimp and, the, you know, we're doing the whole deal. Yeah. And then we took Valium and went to sleep and woke up in Gay Perry. Yeah, in Gay Perry. And I have a video of it of you coming out of the door going, to God, I'm in Paris, you know. Yeah. Uh, hey, Alex, was it, when you had that radio free jack site and you had all the videos from Europe, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, hers was there. Uh, yeah. And okay, also, okay. if you go to uh, if you go to my Roku channel, it's up on the Roku channel as well, I think. Uh, okay. I can't remember. Is that oh. one up there? I can't remember. But uh, uh, yeah, we we went to uh, went all over the place. Uh, we and we wound up in Ibiza in the end. When when you yep. could when you could wind up in Ibiza and not be a total dick, you know. Uh, now it's like tourist heaven. Or yeah, whatever. I mean when we went, it was perfect. Even in Barcelona, Barcelona was wonderful. Oh, I got to tell you a story about her in Barcelona. This is this is the best. In Barcelona, and I don't know if it's the same now, was famous for one thing, and that is purse snatching. Okay? On the Rombolus. On, on, yeah, on, the gypsies. Well, on yeah. the Rombolus, but anywhere else. Okay? Uh, <laughs> she's walking. She's, you've got a purse or something like that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, somebody comes along and snatches it. Now, what would most women do? They would scream and yell, somebody just stole my purse. Tell them what you did. I chased that bitch down and got it back. <laughs> <laughs> she ran like a motherfucker. And the, uh, in the end, the guy actually, you learned, we learned a great lesson. What happened is uh, he, he, the guy, you chased him long enough that he just threw the purse down on yeah. the ground because he knew you'd stop to get the purse. And by then he had maybe gotten a couple of bucks out of it, okay? But but the fact was you got your purse back and you got yep. your license and all those things. You oh know. yeah, passport. Yeah, but I he mean he didn't take it. He actually didn't take anything out of it. Oh, he didn't. Nope. Okay, but my you know uh, chasing the guy was the right idea. You but he did throw it on the ground, didn't he? Oh yeah. So, so that you would stop and pick it up and he could just get away. Not if he had yeah. a knife or a gun or an accomplice. What are you, what, yeah. are you, what are you saying, Phil? She could have taken all of chase, them. Chasing a guy <laughs> is not a good idea. Huh? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It was my first instinct. Yeah. Yep. And I and my whole background's law enforcement. And yeah. Yeah. I, I had a little bit of that myself. Yeah. You were with the UPS police though. Yeah, you know, I was uh, interviewing with OPD, and my uncle was head of homicide at the time, Oakland PD, and he was just like. Uh, I go, well, should I? And he's like, I mean, he was going, uh, I can't tell you yes, because your you mom know, will kill me. But, you know, UPS offered me a lot more money than OPD was willing to pay. Wow. Uh, the thing about uh, OPD is those guys tend to chase uh, criminals, and they are the ones that tend to get shot. Uh, well, no, but sometimes, uh, sometimes the criminals drop the purse, and they, they quit chasing them. You see, Maybe. there there was the joke there. You see, I'm doing a callback to the discussion we had about her dropping. Forget it. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, uh, yeah, I've, uh, you got to be a good witness. But uh, I'm glad you got your purse back. Purse back. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it was it was just it was it was a wonderful wonderful trip and and uh, but we did have one fight. I remember we had a fight in Italy in a tra in the world's worst traffic jam. It was, we thought it was an olive oil spill. Yeah, I mean, it, the, it literally, we pulled. We we were going down the road and it said, uh, "No, you have to pull off the road because you can't go ahead here." So we pull off and it's a it's traffic is just backed up and it isn't moving. I mean. It was the most horrendous traffic jam I've ever been in in my life. And so we lost our tempers with each other. And that was the only time. I think at one time, at one point in the, in the yelling, you said to me, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember I shut the fuck up. I didn't shut say a <laughs> word to you. You would say, so what do you think? You think we're going to get out of the traffic? He wasn't saying a word. And finally, she said, will you say something? And I said, you told me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> he, he does that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that was the only time I ever felt I was going to get killed by her. You know, it was just, it was, you know. No, was the, the sign in English? Went, but we finally we got went, the, hmm? Was, remember the, the time we were in Barcelona and we were getting ready to eat and you took a picture of me and you put the camera up and then you slowly put it down and you had this weird look on your face and then you put it back up and you took the picture and I'm looking at you and you go, I'll tell you later. Because yeah. what was behind me? Russian, oh, those yes. Russian mob guys? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, we, no, this no, it wasn't in Barcelona. It was in, it was in Ibiza. It Ibiza. was at the hotel in Ibiza. And we were there and we were sitting there eating and so i was going to take a video because i always have my camera going yep. and i'm turning it on and all of a sudden i see over at the other table it's a table full of russian mobsters and they're giving me a look like you better not take a fucking picture <laughs> i mean and didn't they separate so that you could so that I, so that i they wouldn't get photographed yeah Jeez. yeah yeah so. How do you know they're Russian mobsters? Because like, they were speaking they Russian and they look like mobsters, okay? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. You, you looked at these guys and you knew you didn't want to fuck with them, okay? They look like those Russian mobsters that you see like on TV shows with the big square heads. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Totally, and, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. serious yeah. looks that yeah. never And they go had away. all their little hookery girlfriends with them. Yeah. Oh, that's the sign right there. Yeah, that's it. yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were enjoying themselves and having a nice time in Ibiza, but, you know, uh, so, uh, but th that was in Ibiza when that happened. Uh, and uh, you know, we, we, we uh, that was it was pretty pretty nice. Uh, that was that was the uh, I think the vacation of a lifetime. I I think that would. But you know something? After three weeks, I think that's about all I can take of vacation. Yep. Uh, and because you had the three chip digital camera, and we were at the airport in Barcelona, and I had my poster. And by that time, I had been I had had it with having a camera on me. Yeah. And I was saying, sir, there is nothing to see here, sir. Please put the camera away. <laughs> yeah, the, all you saw of me on that vacation was a camera in front of my eye. Yeah. You know. Uh, but uh, what the hell? It was, uh, it was, it was fun. But, uh, you know. So we're, rem we're remembering our time together, folks. It's uh, remembrances here. But you know what? That's what, After you put that DVD together, that's when I figured out what a fantastic editor you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am a pretty good editor. Yeah. Well, very good. Yeah. Uh, I could do that. In those I days, it was could have been Mr. White on Superman. Well, in those days, it was a, <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a lot more work. Uh, than to edit and, and all that stuff. Today, it, I could, uh, the editing that, if I had all that footage, I could probably put it together in a, a, a eighth of the time that it took me in the old days to do it, you know. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, but I also had a, I had a great uh, star here, you know, and uh, we walked the Alps together and uh, we, we, we did the whole thing, you know, but by the end of it, we we're just, yeah. Oh boy, I want to get home. I'm going to get out of this fucking suitcase. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
And uh, if you ever, you know, sightseeing, if you ever seen, you know, you go to the Alps and you go, I have a thing of Bobby Slayton, we're in the Alps, oh, the, the French Alps, uh, for the Olympics in Alberville. And we're up, they put us up in this chalet in um, uh, Kirchival, uh which means horse slaughter. Uh, and uh, uh, they put us up there, and it is it is gorgeous up there. We need and it was snow because it was the winter, and it was beautiful and gorgeous and just you know breathtaking. And I've got a videotape of Bobby Slayton walking up the hill with these mountains behind these beautiful mountains behind him going. Have you ever seen so many fucking mountains in your life? <laughs> this sucks. Well, <laughs> only Slate. Yeah. He's the only person on earth who would say that, really. Look at these fucking mountains. <laughs> you know, that was, it, it, oh, that was, it was gorgeous up there. But anyway, um, um, gee, it's, we got a half hour left to go and we haven't even talked about anything tonight. Uh, You're lucky. What do you mean? What do you mean I'm lucky? You you didn't watch any of uh, Donald Donald Trump falling apart today and and turning into... I I paid no attention myself. Oh, oh, it was... I didn't have three minutes to myself today. Really? I'm telling you, he imploded today. Absolutely imploded. He even did a, a tweet that had the word bullshit in it. Good. Hey, and what I loved, you, and what I loved, Trump, what, what I loved about the networks were they would show the tweet with the word bullshit. I mean, NBC showed the word bullshit, and then they'd say, "Well, we can't say the word." <laughs> what? You've got <laughs> bullshit on the screen. Then you can't say the word. Yes, the BS. BS is the word we have to use. Um, we you can't know, say the word. We're going to say it. Uh, it uh, B shit. That's what it is. Be shit. When, when yeah. you see Trump Be melting shit. down, I see him coming out against the, the bad guys. So, you know, it, your filter is different than, than the uh, You didn't Trump see this filter. today, Phil. No, He's, I didn't. He, the man is having a breakdown. He is, no, he is, I'm he is sure it'll be on CBSN. Yeah. He is in, and he yelled and screamed at a reporter today. It was just. Oh, was that was that the one I heard where the guy wanted to ask a second question? And he said, "No, you only get one." No. Right. No, he said, oh, "No, ask a question of I don't know. He had the the prime minister of Finland. Who gives a shit about the prime minister of Finland? Well, he asked you know, the prime minister of I mean, Finland for some help. I mean, going after it, it, Hillary. No, but the thing is about the prime minister of Finland. Oh, I've got something here, and but I can't show it to you guys. Hillary. Uh, let me let me see here. Should I play it or on. shouldn't I, I can play see it? On the other thing. Well, anyway, um, uh, um, uh, uh, I I want to show you a couple of very uh, very uh, uh, very talented guys. Uh, uh, watch this. I don't know. This is like off of I can't remember where some TV show somewhere. But watch this. See, they're playing the piano with their penises. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you recognize the guy on the left, if, you're, if you can see it? I want to see it for yes. another 15 he, seconds. He is, he, he, what? I have, I have a 15 second, 20 second delay. Yeah. Uh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry. It's my. It's me. Yeah. I'll mute. Yeah. Uh, Did anybody recognize the guy on the left? Uh, that's yeah. That's the Mr. Yep. Bean dude. Huh? No. It's Mr. Not. Bean. It's the president of. of uh, it's the prime. It's the. Ukraine. It's the president of the Ukraine. <laughs> oh right. Yeah. He's <laughs> now, how are you guys seeing this? I'm not on seeing it. Either, YouTube. So. You have to go to YouTube. You have I'm to on to, YouTube with, with the other <laughs> thing. Well, it should, you I should delay. You should see it. You know, it'll come up. Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody else, Ray already saw it. 
Yeah, yeah, I just went over to my computer because I have my phone. Oh, yeah, that's the Prime Minister of Finland. Wow. Yeah. No, no, it's not the Prime Minister of Finland. It's the Prime, Prime Minister of the Ukraine. I mean, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Yeah. Wow, look at that. His, he was a comedian. Yeah, his, their, their act was, was pretending like they were playing the piano with their penises. Wow. Yeah. I got a piano here. Maybe I should... Yeah, Take it up. You can become, <laughs> but anyway, I'm watching the. I can go do it right now if you want. You know what's going to be interesting tonight is if this doesn't go up on YouTube because I played some kind of clip from somewhere. You know, uh, fuck them. Anyway, uh, so uh, where was I? Um, so uh, the Prime Minister of Finland, uh, he was in the middle of this whole firestorm of the press, and they didn't, they didn't give a shit about the Prime Minister of Finland. Who gives a shit about the Prime Minister of Finland? In fact, so Trump starts yelling at this guy, ask the Prime Minister of Finland a question. And the guy says, yeah, but first I want to finish asking you a question. He says, don't be rude, ask the Prime Minister of Finland a question. And he's yelling at the guy. He says, you're being rude, and he's going crazy, going nuts. And, uh, uh, they, you know, nobody gave a shit about it. And, and on top of that, if you ask Trump right now, shows Finland on the map, he couldn't find it. Trump was courteous. He was being respectful to another world leader. Come on. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He spends his whole day in a state of paranoia. And is, is Finland where you get the lutefish from? Lutefish? I think that's the place that rakes their forests so they don't have forest fires? I think so. Well, they don't—they don't have forests. They got—they got tundra. <laughs> no, no, they—they're not that—they're not that bad, you know. Uh, although all those countries are kind of really snowy. Yeah. Uh, when I was in uh, Norway for the Olympics, uh, we drove a hundred miles to Lillehammer, and it was nothing. One of my favorite shows. Nothing but snow. Nothing but snow. You know, and uh, I'm going, and then I, I went there and I had uh, moose burgers, uh, deer, deer burgers. Was it deer I burgers? I had yeah. uh, four seasons of Lillehammer. What? I, I watched four seasons of Lillehammer. Oh, I thought uh, you, you said. I, I got an intimate view of uh, what it's like from Stephen Van Zandt. I yeah. love that show. Yeah. That I think they actually show. filmed it in Lillehammer. Yeah. I, I don't know where they filmed it. But they yeah, did. Might, yeah, yeah. They did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, they asked him to come over and do the show. Really? That was yeah. actually, I believe, the first Netflix original show, wow. if I'm not mistaken. That's what started it all. That uh, was a fabulous show. I think that, it's still... That, the, the bad guy, the, the really wimpy uh, Fini or Nor what was it, Fini Finnish? No, what was it? Uh, uh, Norwegian. Yeah, that guy was hilarious. You know, the one who ended up killing the woman. And oh, the, the driver? <laughs> yeah, that guy was just... Yeah. Who tried to steal so, all the beer or something? Just the main, the other main character. He was so funny. I don't know. Yeah. What his name was. Right, yeah. Let me see. You know the guy, the guy with the mustache, the little, the the, the social worker guy. Oh, oh that guy. Know, his girlfriend. That, right. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was. That, that guy was, was hilarious. Uh, yes, he was. <laughs> by the way, by the way, we watched a, a, a Netflix movie tonight, and yeah. we just started to watch it, and it turned out to be really good. What uh, was it? It's called Shadow of the Moon. Oh, I saw that. What? Did you see it? Yeah. About yeah. the woman coming from the future? Uh, yes, and that ended up being his... No, 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 don't okay, ruin okay. it for the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it ended up being his something. Didn't you, yeah. didn't you think that was really good? <laughs> it was excellent. Yeah. yeah. It, it, all right, but her guns are better than yours. They shut off their guns. <laughs> yeah. It's the gun show tonight. <laughs> hey, I'll open up my safe. I'll show off one of mine. Yeah, now, um, your face is really red, Schmoody. Is it, have you been out in the sun a lot? Well, yeah, because I'm out with a bunch of third graders. Yeah, yeah, because you have light skin, and I don't, that's not the, what, what didn't, didn't you have a problem with sunburn or something when we were on vacation, something? We no, uh, we went there, and I came back super tan with white hair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, your hair gets white when it's yeah. in the sun. Yeah, yeah. So she's a terminal blonde, is what. Well, she no. Is. The older I get, the more reddish my hair gets. Has it gotten gray yet? Not at all. As a matter of fact, my stepsister asked my mom, 
Joanne, what hair color do you use on your hair? And my mom goes, I don't. And then I go, oh, Catherine, you do? <laughs> By the no way, gray. we haven't heard a word practically from Charlene in about an hour. What's up, Charlene? Nothing. I don't know. I just don't want to really interrupt or anything. So. Why? That's why oh. you call, so you can interrupt. That's why Phil calls. Right. I'm good at it, too. Mm-hmm. He's you know. the best at it. <laughs> what you should do is every now and then just say, Phil, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know. And is that Alan. where you learned it from, Schmooty? Uh, you, you, you learned it from her? Shut the fuck S-T-F-U. up? S-T-F-U. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alex, you know mm. what my phone said at about maybe 8.30 tonight? What? Something popped up, and I didn't read the whole article, but something about Pence was on that party line with uh, Pompeo and, and Pence everybody too? on that call. So I guess they they were trying to say in this little blurb that popped up that if he, if he were um, to be like the president, if they impeach Trump, mm-hmm. that he would be next in line to be impeached. So then it said, who's next? Nancy Pelosi. Pence's, Pence's right? mother was on that call, too. Pelosi's third in line. Was. Pelosi is third in line to be president. Yeah. That's what they were saying in the blurb that popped up. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but it's too early. We Speaker of the House. Wait. Well, it's the serious. odds in Vegas about impeachment have gone up, uh, supposedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, I you I, can bet on it in Vegas. That's incredible. There's a, there's wow. a bet right now. <laughs> bet on anything. Whether impeachment. There's no way the Senate would allow Pelosi to take over the House, so they're not going to convict Trump or Pence. Well, you don't say that yet. Uh, you got one one, yeah. one turncoat. You don't know. You don't well. know, Phil. You really don't know. You know? Well, I know. I mean, <laughs> I think that privately, if you were to corner a bunch of Republicans somewhere and say, how do you feel about Trump, tell me your honest opinion, and we won't tell anybody you told us, well, they would probably say we're not happy with him. Yeah, the yeah. only thing that's standing between socialism and uh and democracy is Trump. Socialism, uh, can I can I inform you about something, Phil? Socialism is not the opposite of democracy. No, it's the beginnings of communism. No, 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 no. If you were to say democracy versus totalitarianism, fine. If you were to say socialism versus uh, capitalism, you'd be fine. But capitalism versus democracy, you're making a prejudicial statement that you can't equate the two with each other. Am I right, Ray? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. No, this isn't tomato, tomato. <laughs> Did you guys hear that uh, Bernie Sanders yeah. may have had like a heart problem? Yeah, he's got what I got. Yeah. He just had surgery, yeah. He's out. He, I uh, think he, I think he's out. Okay. He and took the, a hiatus, I, which the, means yeah, uh, the re- reason I th- keep sending money, no. but I'm out. The reason I think he's out is not so much because uh, he would uh, back out because of this, but because most people are not going to feel comfortable now voting for him. Yes, because be, if, he, if, he were, if he had a stent and he were your age, Phil, they'd probably feel okay about it. I got three stents. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, if, if he were your age, maybe everybody would give him a pass on it. He's 78. Okay, yeah. and everybody's worried enough as it is about him because of his age. I don't think he had any heart problems. I think he just wanted to get out. Oh. You know, this oh, oh. this is uh, you know can all I he did something? was. Yeah, no. yeah, yes. Of course. I <laughs> I just happened to rewatch Fahrenheit eleven nine the other day. Nine eleven. Nine eleven. No, no, it's no, 11, it's eleven nine. nine. Michael yeah, eleven nine. Uh, so as I'm watching it, you know, I'm, I was like reliving everything, and I'm like, wow, this is a really good thing that he, you know, made Michael Moore, you know, because it, it's going to be historical. If you want to know what happened, he tells it in the beginning, and then all of a sudden, in one part, he said, somehow Bernie was supposed to be Hillary, like something happened that the Democrats got him. They show him at the convention, you know, introducing Hillary as the candidate. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean, that's probably true because he wouldn't say something like that if it wasn't documented. That's true, right? Bernie? Well, yeah, the superdelegates. The superdelegates oh, yeah. all, all went to... That was it, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, my mother uh, moved to Gainesville, Georgia about 30 years ago, and she says to me, there's a super Kmart here. She was so proud of the fact that there was a Kmart, and it wasn't just a Kmart. It was a super Kmart, just kind of like the superdelegates. 
you know, they're worthless. I don't know how that has anything to do with Super well, Galaxy. Well, su Super Kmart is, you know, yeah, there was well, nothing there. You know. Well, I, but, yeah, I, I, I went to a, a Mac, a McDonald's, and I had everything supersized. So I guess that's yeah. like the super delegates, right? Yes, yeah, Charlie. Right. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, I was going to point out that Jeff Flake, former senator from Arizona, mm -hmm. said former that. Former is the if, key. Yeah, but he said, yeah, because if he was still there, he'd never say it. But he said if there were a secret vote, 30 Republicans in the Senate would vote Trump out of office. Yeah. It, but it's not going to be secret. And Jeff Flake. No was not a Trump supporter at all. Jeff Flake was a flake. Well, a lot of those senators are not Trump supporters. They're just scared shitless of them. That's well, good. well they, what they're scared shitless of is not being a party... In power. No, a party uh, uh, loyalist, as it were. Yeah. You know, and uh, they, they feel that this is, you know, this is the one guy that they have hope in to keep the Republicans in power. Uh, and what are they? What are they going to do if suddenly Trump gets impeached? And let's say the impeachment works or whatever, who are they suddenly going to throw in to run for president? They have nobody. You know what, Pence? You right. know, no, Pence. Pence won't run. Pe you know, well, Pence might run, but Pence can't win. Pence got no personality. This is what I'm worried about with Elizabeth Warren. I was saying this to girlfriend tonight, was that the problem with Elizabeth Warren is her politics are right on target. You know, I really like her, all right? But she has no charisma at all. Zero. Zero charisma. Uh, That's not you, who we are. Hmm? Tony what? Magno has more charisma than uh, than she does. Well, I disagree. What, 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 uh, you what, think it, she has more charisma than Tony? <laughs> <laughs> I think she has lots of charisma. I love Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, 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 you know, I worry about that part of it, but I... I Intellectually, uh, I'm probably more for her than anybody else. Uh, Shmoody, do you have anybody in this game, or are you just not paying attention to it? No, I mean, I have issues with the whole lobbying thing. I mean, I would like to hear some of the, I mean, just one of the politicians come up with a good plan for um, the homelessness and the drug addiction. Mm-hmm getting to the root cause of it and coming up with some good plans. Yeah. How about, how about a, a year to school, right? Your teacher to school. Uh, how are the parents feeling about, you know, the kind of violence we've had in schools lately? Um, I, well, like here in California, uh, you know, it's funny because my son, he's in eighth grade, so he's in junior high school. And, and so he's got these pair of shorts and they're reversible. So they're either blue on one side or red on the other. And he absolutely refuses to wear the red ones. And I go, dude, listen, the cartels have all absorbed those gangs. They don't even fly <laughs> colors anymore. <laughs> the Seriously. I mean, hey, Schmoody, yeah. what do you think? What do you think about uh, in Florida? There's uh, uh, they passed a law that teachers could carry guns in the classroom uh, and, uh, if, with training. Uh, now, not all counties decided to adopt that. If if they were to have that in California, what what do you think of that? Being in uh, you work in a school, you know, I don't know because you know I have guns, um, but you know I've been shooting since I was a kid. My dad is a retired colonel in the military. Um, some teachers it would probably scare the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. Other teachers I would be okay with. We got to have 140 hours of training. Gee, right. you, you should start. You should start your own uh, podcast, Guns with Guns. Very funny. <laughs> uh, no. I mean, but we had at at the class I'm in, and I'm not a teacher. I'm just a teacher's aide. But you know, the first week of school, you know, we were going to have a lockdown drill, and where the teacher wanted to put the kids, I told her, uh, uh, uh. I go, there's two windows right there. I said, nope, they're going to be back over here by this door because you have to have an out just in case. But but it, there is some kind of thought being put to that, right? Well, the problem with the training here in California is just be quiet and hope and pray the guy doesn't come by. Yeah, yeah. that, well, that doesn't be, work. Exactly. And my you, thing is... I believe you got to be offensive. About, yes. So when they're talking about the lockdown, I'm already looking at file cabinets to tip over in front of the doors but right. they're like oh just cower in a corner 
Mm-mm. Like when the whole thing happened in Florida, you know, I asked the principal um, at the school I'm at, I said, so you guys always know when there's going to be a fire drill because it's always planned. Right. I go, okay, so what's the contingency? What is the protocol if the fire alarm starts going off? And it was nothing but a blank stare. And I said, that right there scares the shit out of me. Yeah. When or there's the no simple plan, fact, the people perish. Yeah. I mean, we had a meeting about live shooting, and um, they were saying, you know, some of the other teachers were saying, well, if we hear something, we'll call Lisa and Carol. They're the two gals in the office. And I turn around, I go, they're dead. Because the first thing I'm going to do as a live shooter, I'm taking out your fucking communications. So they're done. So now what? They'll throw their eraser at them. Yeah, I mean, it's just <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So so you would, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, you would be pro-trained uh, teachers, uh, and these are anonymous. They don't know which teacher is carrying and which one isn't, uh, having uh, guns in the classroom. Um, I'd be 50-50 for it. I'd have to see what the training programs are. And I mean, Jesus, and who signs up for it? I mean, really, half of me says yes, and the other half says, holy shit. Only because I know some of these teachers, and you know, they're going to have, you're going to have, you know, your one rogue teacher or two, they're like, oh, I've got this. I know what I'm doing. I mean, I don't know. My son will not go to high school here in California. He's going to do online schooling at home. Hmm. Because I do not trust the security. I mean, if I were the head of security at a high school, I'd be hitting all the other schools that are going to feed my high school so that by the time these kids get to my school, they all know me. I already have a rapport with them. So if there's rumblings of something going on, they're going to have no problem coming to me and telling me. Plus, you know who's uh, acting out in the other schools and you got to keep an eye on them. Absolutely. Like I tell the kids, I go, 90% of the kids are fine. I said, you'll always have your 10% knuckleheads. Ray, Ray, do you have kids? Yeah, he does. Uh, Ray had his hand up a few seconds ago. Uh, I do have kids. Yeah. Uh, I have kids. Are they, well, how old are they? Uh, 23 and 17. Okay. Two boys. Uh, Is the 17-year-old still in high school or? Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about it? I mean, you're sending them off to school every day and all this is happening. Oh, man. I, I mean, I, I think, uh, I guess I, I sort of feel like, what's your name, Schmoody? <laughs> Kathy. Kathy. God, you know, I, I, I don't have guns anymore, but I did for many years. And I... I, I, I'm wary about certain uh, about teachers having guns. I, I don't I don't know that they would I be don't trained blame correctly. You at all. That's why I say I'm really fifty fifty about it because um, fifty percent of it scares the absolute shit out of me. You know, there's going to be a crazy teacher that ends up shooting people. Yeah. I mean, that we're going to hear yeah. that eventually. And then so I don't know, man. I, I don't think it's a good idea. I think we need. I think what you said. We need to have some better plans. Yeah. Uh, uh, for everything. Earthquake, fire, shootings. It's a joke. Nobody knows what to do in California. I, I remember when I was a kid, the, the fire the fire the fire drills were a joke. You know duck cover and hold. Everything Yeah, was but duck, when I was going to school all you had to worry about were the fire drills. Nobody ever said, Hey, if somebody comes in with a gun and starts shooting, no. you know, yeah, that's all we had too far. Oh yeah, we used to practice getting under the things nuclear war. in case there was an atomic a- attack or yeah, uh, we had, yeah, we had that. Yeah, I always yeah. I always I, I always had the feeling they always went, Get under your desk and put your hand over your neck, I think was the thing. And then the the other hand over your head. And I'm going, yeah, and then I he bend back and kiss my ass Jeez, goodbye is, because, uh, you know, well, come on. I still it's think a, that it's we a, have to do better with controlling uh, assault weapons and all the and all the crap that yeah. we're not doing anything about. I mean, it's just after these last shootings, like this, we're going to do something now. We're never going to forget about this and something's going to happen. Have we talked about what's happened in the last few weeks? Nothing. Uh, nothing. It's like oh, a thing of the past. No, and, 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 tried to no Trump, put in the but Trump, so Trump has been spending check. his entire days Feeding his paranoia Trump. about Joe Biden, you know he he doesn't he Joe does, Biden he doesn't done. have time for anything else. You he know? doesn't have to do anything else. Joe Biden is. Well, done. What do you mean? But he's spending oh, his entire days obsessing about it. Well, he's yeah. making sure he's done. 
Trump's a fucking nutcase. He really today he looked like he was. He's a he's a. He's and there was insane. one point. There was one point when the and prime you minister, guys are the so prime sane. minister of Finland was talking <laughs> yes. and he was falling asleep at the podium. He had his eyes closed but, and he, you know, I mean, he was thinking. He was in deep thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he has respect for the guy from Finland. Yeah, yeah. ask him a he's question. He's a joke. He's an absolute joke, and he's hurting our country. He's he he's stupid, and he's a fucking. And you don't dictator. think Hillary would have hurt our country? What the fuck, no, Phil? Why do you always this? bring up something that doesn't exist? Because if he wasn't president, Hillary would have. No, no, been. but that doesn't make it's not a good argument, Phil, because it 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 hasn't happened, and it didn't well, happen. No, he said that I'm not Trump talking is a about joke. Hillary. You yes, said Trump a, is a no. Joke. That's a fact a of life. And, he's a, and, and he's ruining our country. He's our and kid. I said he's, if, he's if he so did much. win, Hillary would have been president, and would that have been okay? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Phil. By the way, Matt, I can't, if, I can't. I can't do anything about the way you think. Schmoody, about these you'd be things, happy so I'm, on, I'm not talk on our chat line. Uh, uh, Sh- uh, Matt Crash writes: Schmoody is amazing. <laughs> so, uh, there you go, Schmoody. You're amazing. You're amazing. You got the, you're amaze balls. Amaze balls. <laughs> well, hey, yeah. where do you live? Palo Alto. You, okay, you're in California. We too. got a lot of people. Where are you? We got a lot of people from California. I'm in Tracy. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, you're not far. Yeah. Oh. And, 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 and Phil, Phil and I, we should get together and uh, have a have some, uh, you know. Canicious. Some hey, fun. Yeah, Ray and I get together occasionally. Phil and I are friends. Yeah. It's just on here. We, we argue. <laughs> 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 so weird, man. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. When we're not on here, we talk. <laughs> I, I just, I just, I, 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 it's not you, Phil. It's Trump. It's Trump, man. I, 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 the guy just bugs the shit out of me. Oh, I told you why. So anyway. Well, because he's a douchebag. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's oh, deeper than that. Oh, that's a good a one. They used to call Mussolini El Duce, and he's El Duce. <laughs> <laughs> You know. Well, he's he's uh, an environmentalist. He douches instead of using toilet paper. Uh, well, I, I see. I see. He's French. Yeah. He has one of those bidets. Yeah. <laughs> so what have we learned tonight? We've learned that Schmoody has guns. We've learned that Ray has uh, a dog. Uh, we've learned that Charlie uh, has got gotten most of his got furniture guns. in place. We've learned that Charlene. Uh, what, what did we learn from you, Charlene? You. She's not saying much. She doesn't want to interrupt. No, she said something <laughs> earlier tonight about oh. uh, some medicine or something she was taking. So we, we've learned a lot about our uh, our people here. As it we were. learned that Charlie had six toes on one foot. Right. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Fake news, fake news. Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> I, I, have you ever, ever, quickly, have you ever known anybody who had a six-toed cat? No. It, they're very weird. My cousin has oh, six-toes. That's mittens. mittens. Huh? I, yeah. They, they it, call it, them mittens sometimes. Cat, they'll it, name it mittens. Yeah, but I mean. Extra it, toe? Yeah, extra toes. It's really, extra it's very strange. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, common, yeah, isn't it, it for cats? Like it's not own. uncommon, but it's, it's yeah. not the, most cats only have five. Okay. I bet when humans have them, they just amputate it at birth. Yeah. I guess. Something like that. Anyway, hey, listen, that's our theme song. Uh, once again, Shmoody, a delight to have you here. The more you call, the more we'll, we'll, we'll just call anytime, you know. Um, okay. And, you know, and uh, 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 same with you, Charlene. Good seeing you. It's a nice mix tonight. We got a good yeah. mix of women and guys. Uh, Charlie, thank you. Thank you, Phil, for calling in. Ray, thank you. I apologize to the audience for not showing Schmoody for a while there, but I was so involved in just looking at the Skype screen and whatever. But anyway, will you guys wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye back, and we can all wave goodbye in, in use. And goodbye. There we go. There goes our uh, our, our citizen panel. And uh, uh, Phil and all of them, they were all here tonight. Yeah, it was a nice time being be had by all of us. They said, I'm sorry that I didn't have the, the screen with four people up for a while, but uh, I'm medicated. Okay, what can I say? I, I don't know any better. All right. Anyway, listen, uh, good having you here tonight. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow night, same time, uh, and uh, the same 
station in life at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, right after Damian Chaplin does the exchange. 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you later.